Hey guys, it's Emily Wagner here. I'm the owner of New Cuff CrossFit. Thanks so much for being a part of our Gobblers and Goblets 2019 competition. Uh, we are going to go ahead and walk through all of the standards for the movements that will be in all of the workouts for the competition. For workout number one, we are doing a squat clean thruster ladder. And for this, we're gonna walk you through um, what's acceptable and what is not. For the squat clean thrusters, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the barbell does start on the ground, so you cannot do it from a hang position. Um, we wanna see you transition um, through a clean into the full squat, basically getting below parallel where the hip crease is below the top part of the knee. And then we'll extend into that overhead position. For the overhead position, we want to see the bar clearly over the midsection of your body with your head driving through those shoulders. Okay guys, now I'm going to take some time to walk through a couple of examples of exercises that will be considered a no rep. So the first one I'll show you is where our hip crease does not get below parallel, so we're not reaching the full depth of that squat. For the second no rep, I'll go ahead and show you where the bar is not fully extended overhead, but rather out in front, so that the bar is not over the midsection of the body, but more in your peripheral view. Okay. So those are gonna be some two no rep, common no reps that we see. We also obviously need to have our arms completely extended at the top versus bent. That will also be considered a no rep. Let me go ahead and show you one more time a good rep. Starting from the ground, going into a full squat clean position with the bar clearly over the midsection of the body at the top. We're talking about the movement standards for workout number two for our gobblers and goblets competition. Um, I'm going to walk you just through all of the things we're looking for for the specific skills involved in that workout. We're going to start with our scale division and we're going to talk about the hand release push up. So for our hand release push up, we are going to have you place both of your feet um, onto a 45 pound plate. The main thing we're looking for is that you touch your chest to the floor, release your hands at the bottom, and then extend those arms fully. Um, at the top position. So I'm going to demonstrate as so. So my feet go onto the plate. We're going to go all the way down to the floor, touch our chest to the ground, release those hands, and then we want to see a full lockout at the top. So one more time, all the way down, touch chest hits the floor, release those hands, and then lock out at the top. Okay. Um, for this particular movement, uh, we're not going to um, no rep you if we see any sort of warming um, with your body. Um, the main thing we're looking for is the chest touching, the hand release, and the lockout at the bottom. I will show you a couple of no reps where we don't see um, those three particular things. So toes on the plate. Okay, let's say I go down and I don't actually release my hands. That's going to be a no rep because we need to see that hand release. Um, let's say I just kind of do a regular push up. That's going to be um, also a no rep because we don't have that hand release. Um, and then let's say we go down, release those hands, but we don't actually lock out at the top. That's also going to be a no rep because we didn't press out as needed. <clears throat> um, as far as the warming goes, I'll demonstrate kind of how our warming push-up looks. So if we go down, release, and kind of throw our chest up to get up, that's going to be okay. We're not going to no rep you. Um, the reason we provided the plate is just to um, eliminate that. It's going to be a lot harder to warm it, warm it with the plate that's provided. Okay, guys, now we're talking about the power snatch for the scale division on workout number two. Um, for this particular movement, we want to see the barbell start on the floor, so nothing from the hang will be permitted. The main thing we're looking for um, is that we see a lockout with control at the top before descending the bar onto the floor. So again, I set up for my position. Bar is on the ground. And then I'm going to go ahead and snatch as so. Full lockout of the hips, arms, and I have control of the top before lowering the bar back down to the ground. Okay, so uh, some no reps that we may see for this particular skill is um, if we don't have, if you don't extend those hips at the ground before lowering that bar. So we want to see full extension of the hips with stability. 
Here's an example of a no rep. Okay, so for that particular movement, I lowered the bar before I stood up to show control. Um, another thing may be where you just don't have any sort of uh, stability at the top. So we never quite gain control of that bar. Okay, we want to see stability before moving on to that next rep just for safety purposes. And then um, another would be if we don't hit that lock out of the arms. So make sure that we do have that full extension of those arms overhead. It is a power snatch, so if you happen to squat snatch it, it will be a no rep. We do want to see those hips above parallel for this particular movement. Okay, on to the RX division. We're going to go ahead and demonstrate the squat snatch. Um, for this particular movement, it must be taken from the floor. You cannot do it from the hang position. Um, we want to see you travel through the full bottom depth of the squat, and then we want to see full extension um, at the top with control before lowering that bar down into the next snatch. So when I set up, I'm from the ground position. I hit my full depth, and then I show control at the top before lowering that bar into that next step. So that's the kind of squat snatch we want to see. Uh, let's talk about a few no rep options, okay? Uh, the most obvious one would be not hitting full depth in the squat. So it would turn into more um, of a power snatch. Okay, so my hips are not quite below parallel at this, so that's gonna be a no rep. The other no rep we might see is where maybe we hit the full depth of the squat, but we don't quite um, stand up all the way before lowering that bar. Okay, so I never quite fully stood up with that bar to show I had control. We're talking about the chest to bar movement for workout number two. Um, for this particular movement, we're looking for full extension of the arms at the bottom, and we want the bar to physically touch your chest um, at the top. So for this, we can do it in several variations. You can strict um, chest of bar, you can do a kipping chest of bar, and you can also do a butterfly chest of bar. Okay, so um, an example of no reps would be not touching your chest to the bar or not fully extending those arms at the bottom. So try and demonstrate that as best as I can. So my chest clearly was not touching that um, at the bottom. Okay guys, so now we're going to go ahead and talk about the bar facing burpee, which is going to be seen in both the scaled and the RX divisions. Um, for this, we're basically following the same standards that we follow um, on the open. So for this, we want your um, chest to touch the ground. Um, we want you to be perpendicular to the bar, so we can't stand at a diagonal of any sort. We basically want you um, making a perpendicular line to that bar. And then um, you can come up out of the burpee however you'd like. So whether that's jumping up, stepping up, crawling up. Um, but we do need to see you take off two feet as you jump over the bar. So I'll demonstrate as so. I'm going to burpee down. I touch my chest to the ground. Jump my feet back up. And then I'm going to take a two feet hop over the bar, turn around, and once again do a perpendicular burpee. Now in the other direction. Two feet as so. Now, as far as the burpee standard goes, um, you are allowed to jump up as I demonstrated, but we can also step up or crawl up or step down. So for example, I could step down, step up, and take my two feet hop over. Let's say we're really tired. We can kneel down, crawl out, crawl back up. As long as we take that two feet hop over, then it's going to be considered a good rep. So let's uh, go ahead and demonstrate a couple of no reps. So one would be um, doing a diagonal stance to the bar, or a parallel stance to the bar. 
okay? Another common no rep you're going to see is people jumping off of one foot over the bar versus two feet. Okay, so we cannot hop over the bar. We have to take a two feet lift off to land on the other side. Okay guys, we're talking about the movement standards for workout number three. Um, we're gonna go ahead, uh, for both the scaled and the RX division, there is a row. We're not gonna demonstrate the rower. Um, you will be in charge of turning that on um, and making sure everything is set prior to the workout going. We're gonna go ahead and talk about the deadlift movement now. Uh, for both divisions, we wanna see the barbell start on the floor. We wanna see you fully extend those hips and knees um, as we elevate the bar to the top. So as far as the grip you use, we don't care if you do a mixed grip or a straight hand grip. Um, for this, we just wanna see full extension at the top with those knees extended, with those hips extended. Um, an example um, of a no rep would be not extending those knees. Okay, so you're doing uh, more of a, a clean pull here versus an actual deadlift with those knees still bent. Um, or we're staying hunched over the bar and not actually standing up, so those hips never extend. All of those are going to be no reps. Let me show you one good rep again where we see both hip and knee extension. Okay. For those of you where this movement may be a little bit lighter, um, you may be tempted to kind of bounce the barbell off the floor. Um, we're basically just don't want a purposeful bounce. So we don't want to see you bend the arms and really push that barbell into the floor. A natural bounce with the rubber plates is fine. So I'll show that example. Okay, that's fine. A purposeful bend will look like this, where you bend your arms and really force it to push off the floor. Okay guys, now we're talking um, about the box jumps and box step ups for the scale division. Um, note that our boxes um, are going to be the wider wooden versions that can rotate from a 24 inch to a 20 inch. You guys are responsible for rotating that box um, as the men and women transition between the reps. Uh, for the scale division, um, we are allowing either a box jump or a step up, where we're looking for you to take off of two feet um, or step up, but the main thing we're looking for is full extension at the top before going into that next rep. So if I do a box jump, we wanna see full hip extension before I go down into my next rep. Of course, you can jump down, step down, bound down, whatever you feel comfortable with. If we're going to step up, we wanna see full hip extension at the top before moving on to my next rep. Um, you don't have to alternate legs or anything like that, that's up to you. Uh, what we don't wanna see is a box jump where we jump down, we didn't hit that extension, or one of a step ups as so, where we're also not extending. For the RX division, we are requiring a jump. Again, you'll see the same size box, 24 inch and 20, that you will have to turn over as you rotate through your teammates. Um, for this one though, we are requiring that jump. So again, we wanna take off of two feet and see that full extension at the top before we either jump down, step down, or bound down into that next rep. Okay guys, uh, we're talking about the scaled division ab mat sit-ups. Um, for this particular movement, we're going to have you use um, one of our ab mats. We're gonna have you seated in an Indian style position or a butterfly position. And the main two things that we're looking for on this to count as a rep is that we wanna see your shoulder blades touch the ground on your way back and your hands touch the floor in front of your shins on the way forward. So when I go back, my shoulder blades touch the ground, so I don't have to actually touch my hands, just my shoulder blades. And then I want to see my hands touch in front of my shins in front of me. So a no rep would be here, where I don't go all the way back, and I don't come all the way up. Or if I touch back here behind me, behind those quads. So we're, again, shoulder blades touch the ground, reach forward to the ground in front of me to complete that full ab mat setup. <clears throat> what we will not allow is any um, other position, so we can't sit as so in Indian style, we can't have our legs out in front of us, and we're not going to do a classroom sit-up or military sit-up, okay? We want to see butterfly position so that we can clearly judge where your hands hit 
in the proper position. So now we're talking about the wall ball scale division workout number three. Um, for this particular movement, we are looking for um, essentially two main things. One, did your hip crease go below parallel um, during the bottom portion of the squat? And did you hit or go above um, the designated target uh, with the wall physically touching the wall? Uh, for the scale division, it's gonna be a nine foot target for the men and eight foot target for the ladies. Um, and also, I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. We don't have our specific targets in this room, just know that they will be demonstrated clearly with lines the day of the competition. An example of some no reps would be where we don't get below parallel um, in the squat and where the ball doesn't physically touch the wall. So for that one, I wasn't getting low enough. For this next one, I'll demonstrate the ball not hitting the wall. And of course, the most obvious no rep would be where the ball goes below the target line, um, which we, you'll be able to see the day of the competition. Now let's talk about the toaster bar for our third workout. Um, for this particular movement, we are looking for a couple of things. These are your uprights. We're looking for your feet to pass behind you um, or pass behind the upright on um, the initial swing as we move into that arch position. And then we're looking for our toes to touch the bar um, at the top. Okay, so no reps. One would be where the feet stay in front of the upright. So we're holding more of a piped position out in front of us. Um, and then two, obviously if our toes do not touch the bar, that's gonna be a no rep. And then just going by our typical open standards, we want our feet to stay between our hands versus straddling the bar. And in addition to that, we're trying to avoid any pitter patters of our feet. So both feet are supposed to touch the bar at the same time. So I'll try and demonstrate those no reps as best as I can. We'll go ahead and start with that piked position. So you can see, basically I was not allowing my legs to go fully extended behind me to pass the upright. <clears throat> Another no rep would be obviously my toes not touching the bar. Okay. And then the other ones would be where we pitter-patter our feet or straddle. Okay. So both of those are going to be considered no reps. So for the main thing we're looking for, feet behind the upright on the back swing, touch your toes to the bar at the same time in between that grip on your hands. For the RX division, you guys are going to be doing handstand push-ups. We are not going to be using our traditional handstand push-up mat. We are going to provide you with um, two plates and an ab mat. And the reason we're doing this is so that um, we are not interfering with the toes to bar that happened earlier in the workout. So these will be off to the side. You are responsible for setting them up once you get to the handstand push-ups. We'll provide you with two plates and an ab mat that will be in your lane. Your responsibility is to walk to the spot on your wall, set these up once you get to that particular spot. For the handstand push-up, um, we are going to basically look for you to do a handstand up against the wall. Um, once you reach that extension against the wall in the full handstand, you're gonna lower down um, to the plate so that your head touches the mat and then you can either strict handstand push it up or kip it up and again we want to see full extension of those arms with your feet touching the wall before you lower down into that next rep. Okay, so that was an example of the two um, types of handstand push-ups that um, you'll have the option to perform. Um, a couple of no reps is if you do not kick up into that handstand first, but basically start in a headstand position or kick right into, um, uh, into the headstand position without fully hitting that handstand position first. So I'll just demonstrate that. So a no rep would be here where we're just starting in a headstand position. This first rep will not count, okay? However, if you go into a second one, it will because you'll be going from that fully extended position. 
Another one would be where I kind of kick into a head handstand, but not really. Okay. Again, we won't count that first one because you didn't get to that full extended handstand before lowering down. Another obvious no rep would be where we don't actually lock out our arms. Okay, those are some no reps. And then um, the other main one you'll see is where your feet do not hit the wall before you lower down into that next rep. So my feet didn't actually touch the wall there before I lowered down into that rep. So that's going to be a no rep as well. 